Hello Chummers, welcome back to Synergy Bonus. We're going to be gearing up for some Shadowrun, and unfortunately I'm the one who's put in charge of this Motley crew. Pray for my soul. Just bring us some girls, girls, girls. So, we are going to be playing Shadowrun 6th Edition. You'll pay for us already. The purple one. Yes, the purple one, the one where they have the page numbers on the wrong section here rather than down here where they belong and instead of the traditional dragon skull we've got no oh, that's been that's been out dragons. of use for like four editions yeah, that's yeah. yeah is that like supposed to be the feathered serpent or no 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 they've always had that weird snake thingy as the s but they got rid of the cool cyberpunk skull background but yes shatter on the sixth world it's here it's done we we're sorry, it. and we're pretty sure anyone with a catalyst with some self-respect is also sorry. Yeah, it's not good. Anyway. <laughs> but it's not done by a long shot. There's a lot of errata that needs to happen. What was it you were saying that there was like the 5th edition errata team just looked at this, threw up their hands in disgust, and walked away? The 5th edition errata team, which was led by the community on the Shadowrun subreddit and the Catalyst Games forums who did all of the errata work for 5th edition, didn't want to touch this. Anyways. But either way, I'm kind of a masochist and not in the fun way. So we're going to have, yes, Vigo generate a character, because not only am I kind of a masochist for even putting up with this, a bit of a file of Drek, I must definitely a sadist. You can catch from his uh, forced abuse of the... Uh catchphrases that uh, we're, we're kind of invested in Shadowrun. We, we love this a lot. Um, Actually, that's where we got Synergy bonus because, well, we were team synergy, synergy and the whole logic of one plus one is three. You and me. Synergy. synergy. What are you going to do? Cocaine and blow shit up. Like, what are we going to do? We're going to take drugs and fight a bear. Come you're on, in... Get it right. You're in Redmond and the nearest zoo is... I, I'm going to have to go and look at a book where a zoo is. All right, road trip. Let's go. Nothing. Downtime. We've talked about this. Anyways. <laughs> One police Here. chase and a uh, fire hydrant ripped out of the ground later. If you're interested, link right here. So. War stories. But yes, so we're going to have Vigo generate a character. Now, unlike 4th edition, we have reverted to Shadowrun's older system of generation. The priority build system. Yay. What is a priority build, you might ask? I might. Basically, you have five columns to work through, ranked A, B, C, D, and E. Now, as you can see, the highest rank, A, for any attribute gives you the most options for it. So using attribute points as an example, at priority A for your attributes, you gain 24 attribute points to spread across your eight attributes. Those being body, strength, agility, reaction, charisma, intuition, logic, and willpower. As with any generation system, you start with one rank and an attribute point. You can move up to six, which is different from previous editions. It used to be if you were playing a meta type, alternate race, that had, say, a maximum strength of plus two on it being a troll, which their maximum was nine, so plus three. You can still only up it to six with regular attribute points. You have to use a new mechanic to go above the maximum of six. But you go and lay out your priorities, A, B, C. As they go down, they get sequentially less points. So using A for attributes, 24. B for attributes, 16. C for attributes, 12, 8, and 2 going down the ladder. So depending on what you're building, you have to go and set your priorities. If only someone told me this when I was 12. <laughs> My life would be so much different. Mm -hmm. But the categories are Metatype, Attribute, Skills, Magic or Resonance, and Resources. Now, Vigo is creating the team's hacker. Decker. We're, we're back to that term. We're a Decker. Yes, we're back to being Deckers again because Catalyst realized they made a boo-boo. The decks were iconic and cool. Part of the and no one likes their smartphone. So That's why we don't deck off a comic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now also with the, the priority system for the meta type, what races you can play as, different options are available based on what 
you've chosen for your priority. And this was one of the big changes for this edition, I believe, that it used to be you had to have a certain priority to get a certain meta type, and that is no longer the case. You can have a meta type priority E and still be a troll. It is reversed now. Oh. At high, if you put a priority A instead of E, where E traditionally, you were just a human. At E, you could be a dwarf, an elf, a human, an orc, or a troll with one adjustment point. We'll get to adjustment points in a moment. However, if you put priority A, you could just be a dwarf, an orc, or a troll. However, you get 13 adjustment points. Now, I've been using that term quite a bit with a little bit of derision. So you might be wondering what it is. No, I'm just bracing for the backlash from the Shadowrun fanboys. So, attribute points, or yeah, adjustment points, basically allow you to raise an attribute outside that maximum of six I mentioned earlier. So, if you have a troll and you've used your attribute points to already increase his strength to six, but you know, trolls have a strength of nine maximum, you need to use adjustment points to go above and beyond those normal limitations. Now with humans, there's not a whole lot of use for adjustment points. You can use it for your edge. You can use it for resonance or magic if you're awakened or a technomancer. Why you'd want to be a technomancer, I still don't understand. Role playing flavor. They're kind of broken. Um, Technomancers are the half-elves of this system. You're only playing them if you really want the role-playing experience. Or you really hate decking with cyberware. Yeah, yeah, can't argue. But you're going to use your adjustment points to go and min and max those outside attributes. That's the whole point. So with a human who only has one attribute that they can raise really good, that being their edge score, because they're lucky. Humans are lucky. That's our whole shtick. We're lucky. I don't feel lucky. If I were lucky, I would be eating dandelions, I think. Extended lifespan, improved charisma, good looking. Drek off, you dandelion-eating keeb. <laughs> Whatever, breeder. Whatever. But, seeing as they only have the one attribute edge to raise because they're lucky, they don't, they not much of an investment for, ad, er, for adjustment points. But a troll that has two attributes that could go well outside its normal limit of six, yeah, an elf for the same. Heck, a dwarf with their increased strength, body, and willpower. Orcs with their increased strength and body. And nose. And tusks. <laughs> Orc poser. Orc posers. Orc posers everywhere. But yes, yeah, okay. that is the new change with Metatype. That aside, we have a Decker that we are making. Specifically, he is not going to go and recreate the Decker that he played in the, the pre-made pre, pre module starter kit because he would probably like his character to live more than five minutes without getting hit by, I don't know, a semi that comes out of nowhere with no logic. Because if I encounter that character again, there will be a semi. <laughs> because reasons. Because I hate that character. Fuck you, zip file. Uh, I'm going to set as my lowest priority magic because as a decker, I don't need it. And, hmm. you know, I'm going to need some cyberware and stuff along the way, so it really won't like me very much either. Um, don't want to be a burnout. Nope. The next thing I'm going to set as my uh, as rank D is my meta type because I'm just going to be a human. I'm boring, but... You will get four adjustment points, right? Oh, God. You're going to sink all those in edge, aren't you? Of course. What else would I do with them as a human? <laughs> We just went over this. Yeah. yeah. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is actually put, uh, uh, and there's some dispute about this on the forums I was reading. I'm going to put uh, C for my resources because on the one hand, as a decker, <laughs> I need a ton of money for a ton of gear and so on. Most of it's programs. Most of it's, well, actually, no, the programs are fairly cheap. They're like 60 new yen each. Yeah. Um, it's like the deck and the cyberware that are expensive. But this game at character creation, as I'm reading the book there, is stupid generous with starting a new yen and availability. Yeah. Like, you don't have to earn anything through play. You get it all up front because 
I guess rewards are a thing that's best left for archaic systems that happen in medieval fantasy settings. Which is, this led to something when the rest of the group and us were all generating characters. I had too much money. He had too much money, but I was looking through the list of availability. Yes, it is totally feasible to start character generation with a medium belt-fed machine gun. Or an assault cannon, so long as you don't have ammo for it. And I just looked at that and I said, You we... what? Yeah, I'm not going to make that joke. We hmm. don't need to cut that. So I set the cap for character generation on availability of four. However, we then ran into the issue that all of Vigo's programs for well, hacking... All the illegal five. hacking programs. All the, all the fun stuff. Let's uh, fall just outside that range. So he is getting a pass... This way, he is the only but one... But not an initiative pass. But that's something else we'll come to later. <laughs> or another video. Um, Just like me complaining about Edge. Yeah, we're gonna... Have but to give you an idea here, um, I'm making a kind of weapons expert... Uh, He's uh, making Demo Man. Demo Man, yeah. That's what I'm mean. sorry. Um, not to be confused with Demolition Man. But I put my wow. resources in Priority B... And I'm like, what do I spend my money on? I could have spent it on like some cyberware and whatnot, but that's not what I wanted to do with this character. So no, what else? he should have done C for his resources. But I actually ended up purchasing extra vehicles and extra weapons for team necessities. So we had to draw the line at him having a submarine. <laughs> and then not so much we had to draw a line and just said, Can I buy a submarine? And I just said, No. I then looked at the availability, and it's like, I don't care if you can afford it, and it matches the availability I limited to four. You can't have a submarine. But I want to paint it school bus yellow. <laughs> it was like a, what, a three-person Only if stuff. you take a four or a level three flaw of enemy with the yellow meanie, or no, the blue meanies. I'm, I'm willing to do this. So there's where I'm doing my resources, because it gives me enough resources to get the base gear with something to work towards to improve myself gear-wise. Because um, I've always found in Shadowrun improving your gear is much easier than improving your character. Mm -hmm. It depends. Um, when you, It's a system designed around specialization. Mm -hmm. So you want to have one or two skills that you're going to be the focus of your character at high rank at generation. Because it's going to be a pain to raise those specific skills. And then just about every other skill, one or two passable enough to get through day to day and then you can raise them as you go and become more proficient at them because yep. it's still easier to raise a skill that's one rather than buy a whole new skill yep um so on that note my next thing for b is going to be my attributes um and then skills to be a skill monkey uh on top of being the decker just so that i have things to do when there's no you know, matrix hacking to be done. Trading eight attribute points for eight skill points. That's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see how it works for him. So far, so good. Um, so we're going to go ahead and stick all that in there. Okay. All right. And so yeah, we've as got... A, as a decker, uh, logic and willpower are going to be my primary yes. traits. So. Now, the next thing is... Dealing with skills, which this is a change from 5th edition, 4th edition, 3rd edition, 2nd edition, and I never played 1st edition. So, yeah. Basically, they've always gone with the setup of breaking down skills into larger, more categories. You used to have these skill groups, like the athletics groups covered running, swimming, and climbing. Yeah, that's just the athletics skill now. The firearms group used to cover pistols, rifles, assault rifles, shotguns, well, automatics and long arms. But now, that's just the firearm skill. Unarmed combat group, unarmed, co or no, close combat group, unarmed combat, blades, clubs. Yeah, that, that's just the close combat skill now. So, you don't need nearly they've, as many skill points. They've condensed a lot of stuff, and athletics is the god skill for most runners now. Yeah, athletics, because it covers Everything that yeah, it covers throwing, throwing weapons, running, archery. archery yeah, it yeah. reminds me of the way that, uh, and again, we're cribbing from wizards, um, the way that they condensed skills in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Which, a lot. There was some kind of combining skills that I was a fan of for that, like combining spot and listen into perception. I like that. Combining the two different stealth skills together. I like that. 
When it gets to the firearms, you know, being able to fire a pistol and a rifle versus a... very different skill sets. Yeah, specifically as someone who has and shoots both... Like an automatic or something like that. It's just it's very odd. Well, but not like, like the there's rifle versus a shotgun. Very different. Skills. Right. Yep. But um, they have specializations still, and then you say they have one that's further than that. They like, have specializations which kind of represent the old skills. Mm-hmm. You're going to go and use that. You gain your plus two to add dice to it. Unlike third edition, you're not going to lose your one, which they did in fourth and fifth. But you're going to be more set up, so I have a firearm skill with a specialization in pistols. You can then take a term expertise. So not only do I have that specialization in pistols, I have an expertise in heavy revolvers. Which just translates into, I hope you like Super Ru- or Ruger Super Warhawks. In fact, I do, but I'm not taking one. Okay. Which uh, specialization will give you plus two dice. Expertise, you're even more specialized than a specialization. No. Well, I'm probably going to need to talk to you about some specializations in cracking and electronic warfare. Yep. Now, the one thing I hate about Shadowrun, and I've hated for a while, is like the character sheet doesn't actually have the skills yep. on it. It's something that you just have to take in the book. This is a, a constant pet peeve of ours. It's not just Shadowrun. We've recently run into a number of other systems. Um, Deadlands was the other one. I was going to say, I'm looking at you, uh, you, you know, um, not, not Pinnacle, they're the publisher, um, Savage Worlds in general. Like, and just print the damn thing. For Shadowrun, I almost exclusively, for the, the entirety of 4th edition, used the uh, character generator that was available off the Dump Shock forums and used their custom-built character sheet that came with your character when you generated. And the other thing that's well, odd about this, too, is the knowledge skills. They have changed how they Yes, they have changed well. knowledge I, skills. I, I we kind of get it with the skills where they're like, we're going to have all these other books coming out, running wild and whatever. They're going to have new skills in them, so we don't want to... Not really. Yeah. And they're using the EA system, which is what I disagree with, where normally with well, a game like... we pretty much everything electronic arts. Yes, does. as do I. But <laughs> normally the setup is we've released all these new expansions, and now we're going to have a new game come out. That generally means... That old new stuff you added in, new mechanics, that's core. No, 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 no. With the EA system, all of those new mechanics, or some old mechanics that used to be core, that's DLC now. But, yes, bringing up the knowledges, now that Vigo has his skills written down, and will talk to me about specializations in a moment when we get to that, knowledges have been completely overhauled. It's no longer a matter of you have so many knowledge points to spread across them. The number of knowledge points you have is equal to your logic, I do believe it was. Uh, Just check to see if it matches. Yeah, six. So, the number of knowledges you have is equal to your logic score. And languages kind of get rolled into that. Yes. Which I still need to take languages on mine because... Knowledges are now an either you have it or you don't. There are no ranks. And even then, they add a modifier for the associated tests with that. So, if we're in a firefight in the Redmond Barrens, and I have knowledge of Seattle Street Gangs, I'm going to have a modifier on the perception check to notice who the hell is shooting at us. It's the Halloweeners, obviously. I might get a... No, no, it could be the Red Hot Nukes. It could be uh, well, freaking the Wizards. They're screaming at us... Or the Ancients, I'm They're sorry. screaming at us in Orzit, so I don't think it's the Ancients. So what comes after skills, sir? Okay, so we've done knowledges, and we've also languages. Languages, contrast to knowledge skills, do have a rank system. You are one of three ranks in a language other than your native language. And this basically limits your dice pool modifiers with that language. Yeah. That feels unnecessary and tacked on. <laughs> well, this is versus previous editions where if I was negotiating with someone in Spanish, but I only had a Spanish of two, I am limited to two successes on that negotiation test. Sounds like a regular day at work for me. But they, they've streamlined it a little, so it's less numbers for you guys to deal with, and it's more numbers for me. Which is unfortunate. It definitely feels like the screw the... Screw the G- master. I have an entire Did list of bitchings to go and put forward for another video. 
But what are the finishing touches after languages for this? Okay, well, he so wanted to go. In, he wanted to ask me about specialization, yes. so we can do that really quick. I don't think there's gonna be anything. Really okay, good. like active skills, specializations, expertise take time to learn. While specialization can be learned for any skill, there are two prerequisites for an expertise. First, you need to have a specialization in that area. Secondly, your related skill needs to be at least five. So specializations, they are going to be utilizing. Well, you can use, in a one-for-one -one equation, skill points for a specialization. If you do this, you're stupid. It's cheaper to go and use the bonus karma, which is something we'll get to, okay. for them. So we'll just leave those alone until we get to the bonus karma. Yes. Next up is merits and flaws and bonus karma, because the last <coughs> point of Shadowrun is always the most fun to me. Or uh, qualities, I think, is Gear. the term. Yes. Gear is the most fun part to me because it's gun porn. Yeah, like this, something I can say about this edition of Shadowrun, for all of our tangents, getting the stats on paper, like making the raw physical character. Kind of quick. Yeah, kind of quick. It flies right through it. Next up is actually, other than him dueling with gear, we'll be finishing touches, and we've got something new with this edition. Bonus karma! Because someone decided to rip off White Wolf for a change. Here's your freebie points. Instead of the other way around that it usually is. <laughs> and you get freebie points. Yeah. 50 points worth of karma. Now, these are also used for buying your merits and qualities. Oh, merits and flaws. Also just known as qualities because, hey, we're cribbing White Wolf. Because White Wolf cribbed us. Yeah. Not so much cribbed as had similar developers. Uh, um, some more developers, you mean the same developers. At one point, that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> but you're going to have your merits and qualities. These are positive qualities and negative qualities. And they will give mechanical effects. Now, they've streamlined the options for them. And for the rest of the group, I've actually had to homebrew older qualities for people to use. Things like poor impulse control. And I'm trying to think what the other mysterious one was. Mysterious implant. Mysterious no, no, no. Mysterious implant's already in the book. But I had to go and modify it quite a bit. I set up the option that I would not go and give the person a cranial nuke. Why not? Because the idea of putting a hand grenade in someone's head is still something I'm not comfortable with. And for that, we thank you. Um, Instead, I'm giving him a no. dick nuke. I spoke too soon. <laughs> Right. Well, uh, it rhymed with Mick Duke and it amused me. For the sake of convenience, time, and giving you that much less to keep track of at the table, uh, I'm simply going to take Sinner. Okay. Meaning that I have to pay income tax on my earnings, even as a runner. So you have to pay theft. Yeah. No, extortion. Um, and I'm also going to take Analytical Mind, which grants me bonus edge to logic tests. Okay, and did you take enough to actually balance them out? Uh, not exactly. Sinner's a plus eight, and I only lose three for analytical mind, so I have okay. another five to throw into my freebies. All right, so then you've got 45 points of freebies. 55. 55, sorry. Mm -hmm. All right, and once he spends those... Yeah, we're good there, unless I need something for my uh, specialties for hacking and cracking. Specializations will cost five karma. Okay. Per specialization. So, what were you looking at? Cracking. Because that's kind of my primary function okay. within the group. Is yep. doing the, uh, they are not mutually exclusive. You can have multiple specializations. I'm sure of that. Yeah. Um, but that's the, the, the first and big one that I'm looking for. I'm, yep. I'm hoping that they've gone ahead and put some samples in the book. The specializations are cyber combat, electronic warfare, and hacking. Hacking. For electronics, the specializations are computer, hardware, and software. So... The electronic skill is going to be your R&D skill and your maintenance skill. Okay. Your primary skill is going to be cracking. Right. So primary skill is going to be cracking. Yes. Um, and you want a specialization of... Hacking? That... Which I assume cracking and specialization hacking. Yeah. Right there. Uh, so next, before we get to the finishing touches, is the gear segment, which honestly is the part of Shadowrun, as we've already covered, is the longest. And we're going to spare you the hour of shopping with him asking, "Do I want? What do I want for this?" And me being a gun nut, going, "Well, you obviously want this. Oh, wait, you don't have the skills for that. You're gonna to want to reinvest your skill points so you can go and use this gun because it's really nice." <laughs> 
if it gets to the point where I'm the one using guns, something has gone horribly wrong. Or horribly right with the cinematography of the fight that I've presented. See? I, I'm more hoping to be able to sit back and just, you know, shunt biofeedback into unsuspecting... You want to go and hack their cars with your smartphone? I do. I really do. <laughs> Fuck you, die hard! <laughs> I want to be able to hack the alien mothership with my iPad. <laughs> but, other than the gear, the next finishing touch is going to be contacts. Now, unlike previous editions, contacts are six times your charisma rate. <laughs> How charismatic are you? Uh, I have a charisma of three, giving me contacts You have 18, 18 points. contact points, and like previous editions of Shadowrun... They need to be spent on a 1-1 ratio of loyalty and connection. However, now the maximum allotment at generation is 3. Your charisma. Yeah, in my case, 3. Because at generation we had a couple of people that would not increased higher than that and we had to have them re Now, I can understand a cap on loyalty rating, but I... It doesn't make any sense to me that their connection rating can't be higher than my charisma. You already gave me your list of contacts, and I already hate one of them and want to hit them with the truck. <laughs> which is an improvement over wanting to hit Trav's character with a truck. <laughs> one step removed. <laughs> but yes. So, contacts are covered. Yep. What's the next? Uh, contacts. The next is actually just all of the, the math and figuring stuff. Oh, out. oh yes. Attributes. There's a couple of derived attributes that you have to figure out at this point. One of which being your condition modifier. So condition which, modifier. thankfully, there is a little calculation this, chart at the bottom. This is the nice one. They gave you the formula on the track. So it's 8 plus will plus 2 round up for No, no, no. Divide by 2. That is a division symbol. We've covered that on a day you weren't here. So it is. This is one of the complaints that's always been of Shadowrun. Oh, God, I've got two less uh, in my physical damage track than I thought I had. Okay. It just makes, you know, the possibility of death a little higher. Ah, squishy. That was actually something our troll found out, was that... Uh, he can't max out the combat. Yeah. He is not physically capable of actually maxing out the physical damage system. As a troll, with max possible health, with... Cyberware. With adjustment points and cyberware. And we're trying to decide if that's a glaring oversight, or if it indicates that, like, dragons will be playable later on. Uh, Draco forms were introduced in 4th edition. Kind of what I was getting at. Played one in uh, Dawn of the Artifacts. Which... Okay, so you another thing that's new is attack rating and defense rating. Attack rating is something completely new, 4th, 6th edition, and it's kind of a pain in the ass because they retooled how edge works. Uh, basically, your attack rating will be compared to the opponent's defense rating, and if it is greater than 4 above theirs, you gain edge on that action. If it is less than 4, they gain edge on this action. So, and also, your attack rating is going to be dependent on your weapon. Their defense rating is also what traditionally we would know as armor. Okay, for the final calculation, attributes. Your composure is your willpower plus your charisma. Willpower plus charisma. So five is eight. Your judge intentions te uh, attribute is willpower plus intuition. Seven. Your memory has never been the same since you overdosed on weed. Yes, but what about my character? Logic plus intuition. Yes, but what about my character? <laughs> okay. Your lift slash carry weight is body plus willpower... And you can start with a maximum of 5,000 new yen from your money left over. Okay, I have 50. <laughs> well, find a use for 45,000 new yen. Invol investing in the SNP is not a viable use. No, I was probably going to invest in some more data jack stuff. Okay. Skill softs and so on. So 45, 45k? Yes, it has to be spent. Alright, I can do that. This is an easy game to spend that kind of new year. Um, well. Yeah. And let's see. So 
Yeah. So long as I'm not removing the people's options of buying submarines. Actually, yes, it is. Yeah. And I got that, got that, got that. Cover. So we've got qualities, we've got derived attributes, we've got your specializations, uh, we've got... I need to figure out my matrix attributes, but that's... Yeah, that's its own little that's thing own real own. quick. Um, we can actually do that. I don't think there's going to be anything real quick about it. Matrix perception. Uh, Electronics plus intuition. Okay. That's matrix initiative. I don't even see a slot for matrix perception. Okay, then never mind. I'm looking for attack, sleaze, data proc, and firewall. Look at software or data jack, or not data jack, cyber deck rating. Yeah, it says they grant plus one apiece. And I'm pretty sure they don't stack. The Matrix is... Uh, the character sheets are crap, too. Yeah. No, the Matrix was a big overhaul that they did for this edition in several interviews done with the developers. They wanted to streamline things so that when the Decker goes to do his thing, everybody else doesn't have to get up and go, you know, get a pizza or make a Which is what they've been saying for four uh, editions. It's, and... Part of that is that they set a nerfed initiative passes so that I'm hacking in real time. No, you don't have the time to go and get that fucking pizza. Yeah, because it's by the time it gets around the table, it's like the troll's going to shoot, the orc's going to cast a spell, and then it's my turn to hack a little more and deal with the black ice. And then we're back around to the elf, who's going to do his kung fu moves, and we're back around oh, to the Oh, okay. Village. Attack represents the offensive power of the device in cyber combat and how much damage it does. Uh... Your mental attributes carry over into the matrix, but your physical attributes are replaced by four matrix attributes. Attack, sleaze, data process, and firewall. Sleaze is the stealth attribute. Data process is the raw computing power of the device. And firewall is your defense. Do, 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 do. If the device doesn't possess one or more of the matrix attributes, the applicable attribute is treated as if it were zero. You can rotate all of the attributes through your persona, even if they originated from the different devices. Devices also have a matrix condition modifier. Da, 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 da. I think I just found them with my um, deck in my uh, yep. com link. Okay, there you go. So I add... Deck, not com link. Well, no. Um, the deck has data proc and firewall, mm -hmm. but the com link has the attack and sleaze. Okay. <laughs> then, yeah, using those two devices, you've got those attributes. Maybe I've got that backwards because I've got more sli or slots on the other one. Um, yeah, that makes more sense, actually. So, what were the... And they they were linked to my mental attributes. These are your physical attributes for right, the these matrix. These are something my, my something has a physical attributes. Okay. Uh, your mental attributes just carry over. Okay. Yay. Well, I think that covers that, then. Okay, so we have covered the adjustment points. You've spent your bonus karma. Mm -hmm. We've looked at the priority system. We've gotten all through that. And we've covered some of the griping about the new system setup. I think your character's for the most part done. Pretty much. Just some uh, bits and bobs for... Uh you know, flavor. Nothing. We've, we've got the crunchy stuff kind of covered. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, because, like, I don't think anybody cares about my lifestyle or licenses or fake IDs or anything like that. So. Those are useful things to have, but we don't need to cover them. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, there we go. Also, that's a good spending of that 45,000 karma. Or, karma. Oh, God. 45,000 karma. Wow. <laughs> I'll take it. Um... <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, I think uh, with that we've got uh, we've got some dots on paper and a, a quick rundown for anybody who cared to sit through all this. Um, oh, we'll trim this down. Yeah, Maybe even then trim down. I suspect we're going to be running long. So with that, good night, good gaming, and we'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed what you saw. Let us know. Give us a like and a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to make sure you get all notifications from us. And as always, good night and good gaming.